you need. Now this is the overflow. He said, Pastor, he said, there's some things in you that I need to get. I need to learn. And he said, I'm going to be setting up a meeting so you can speak with us. So everybody say, problem solved. But it was really problem one solved. Because in our season of prayer and fasting, doing our relentless focus, we said, God, we said, God, we want to be out of here anyway by December 31st. Amen. We want to have a certificate of occupancy in our hand by December 31st. And uh, by January, I'm sorry, January. Thank you. Thank you. January 31st. So we went on. I went to a minister's conference this week in Georgia and several, several members of the church went with me. Amen. And we were down there this week, and the Lord began to speak and move again. On Thursday at 4.58 p.m., <laughs> I get an email, <laughs> and the email says, Pastor, all the inspections, including the final inspection, has been passed. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> stuff everybody say a whole lot of stuff a whole lot of stuff has happened to love fellowship church over the last two plus years of this kingdom project a whole lot of stuff hallelujah a whole lot of delays a whole lot of mess ups a whole lot of mix ups a whole lot of trials a whole lot of tribulations a whole lot of long nights a whole lot of crying and praying. A whole lot of waiting on God. A whole lot of praying and fasting. A whole lot has happened. But the Lord said it's time. Everybody say it's time. See, there was a set time for the children of Israel to cross over to the other side. You didn't hear what I said. I said there was a set time. We thought October was the set time. We thought last year was the set time. But the Bible says that even Moses couldn't cross over. But there was a set time for Joshua to take the people over. And the Lord says prepare the people's hearts just like we just read hallelujah the Lord said son I'm raising you up like a Joshua he says had not I commanded you in Joshua 1 and 9 had not I commanded you be strong and vigorous and very courageous be not afraid neither be dismayed for the Lord your God, he is with you wherever you go. Then Joshua, then Joshua commanded the officers of the people saying, pass through the camp and command the people to prepare. Hallelujah. 
I'm commanding you in the name of Jesus prepare your hearts prepare your minds for the crossover he said pass through the camp Joshua he said in other words go from person to person amen and let them know what the Lord is saying he says, pass through the camp, hallelujah, and command the people. He didn't say command just the elders or the officers. He said command all of them. Command the people and prepare, prepare, prepare your provisions for within three days, hallelujah. You shall, everybody say we shall. We shall pass over this Jordan to go and take possession of the land this is the key part which the Lord your God is giving to you to possess can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise we are in a season of preparation the Lord says, I'm going to obey God. I heard the Lord say, take a picture. I'm going to take a picture. I'm not going to put it on Facebook, amen, or social media, but I'm going to take a picture. The Lord says, take a picture. I just took the picture. The Lord said, this is your baseline. Somebody can't catch that in the natural, but I pray you catch it in the spirit. <laughs> Does anybody know what a baseline is? The Lord said, this is your baseline. In other words, the Lord said, this is your starting place. This is not your ending place. Hallelujah. He said, this is your baseline. See, anytime you got a baseline, there's an expectation that you build upon the baseline. There's an expectation that you grow beyond the baseline. See, I just took a picture of where we are right now. But I, you got to imagine in the spirit where God is about to take us. Because where he's about to take us is greater than where we are right now. If you can't see beyond what you see right now, you are not prepared to cross over. If you can't see beyond where you are in your own situation right now, you are not prepared for God to take you and reposition you for greater. I dare somebody to go home today and take a picture of where you are right now and decree and declare to the devil, where I am is not where I'm gonna be. God has got greater for me and my family. You gotta pull your, listen, you gotta take your own picture. You gotta take your own picture. I can't take my picture and give it to you. You gotta take your own picture. Come on, tell yourself, I gotta take a picture. I got to take a picture. So you go home. If it's your bills you're worried about, take a picture. If it's your marriage you're worried about, take a picture. If it's your children you're worried about, take a picture. Hey! Hey! Take a picture, take a picture. Take a picture. Of where you are right now, it's your baseline. It's not where you're gonna be. You don't have to be stuck in the baseline. God doesn't want you stuck in the baseline. He wants to take you beyond the baseline. But you gotta take a picture. Yeah. That's what he was telling Joshua. Amen. He was telling Joshua, Joshua, take a picture. The people are in the wilderness right now. Take a picture. Moses is dead right now, Joshua. But I need you to take a picture. 
He wasn't telling Joshua to take a picture with an iPhone or Android. No, take a picture in your mind, in your spirit, in your heart. See beyond what you can see, Joshua. When God told Joshua, I'll be with you wherever you go. He was telling Joshua, Joshua, can you see it? Take a picture. Take a picture. Take a picture. So when I come in here, I smile. Because I know this is the baseline. I don't hold my head down. I smile. Because God says, there's greater on the horizon come on say this is our baseline wherever their foot tread God was giving Joshua and the people the land you gotta have faith to take that picture if it's too painful to take that picture you're not ready to be repositioned. Joshua was in pain. He was in grief. He, he loved Moses. Moses was like his own natural father. And he lost him. He leaned on Moses for wisdom and direction. But God was telling Joshua in the spirit realm, take a picture. See, when you take a picture, I don't care if it's with a phone or with a professional camera, you got to zoom in sometimes. You didn't hear what I said. If you want to get the clearest picture, you got to, sometimes you got to make sure the lighting is right on your phone. <laughs> in other words, that's the relentless focus that you need to have in order to see what you cannot see. I'll give you two things and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it off because we really need to marinate on this. We really need to marinate on this. The Lord spoke to me and he said he said calculate. He said calculate. What do you want me to calculate God? He said calculate over the last 13 years what has been invested in rent and lease payments nothing against rent or leasing but the Lord told me to calculate and I had to go back my wife and I we had to go all the way back to the Holiday Inn Hotel on Harris Boulevard. And that was a long time ago. But we have some members here that were with us. Sister Lakita, amen. Some others. But watch this. And this literally blew my mind because you don't, you don't often think about these things. But it was over a half million dollars it was over a half million dollars that has been invested not wasted because as long as you got a roof over your head it's not wasting whether you're renting or whether you own it's not wasted it was invested but it was invested in leasing and the Lord says, whenever you are under the thumb of Laban, Laban, you have to study Jacob and Laban and all. He was a, he, he was a, he was a, he was a, he was a hard taskmaster. He said, whenever you have landlords, he said, you're subject to the things that the landlord says. He says, but in this new dimension, amen. Because the crossover is a repositioning of Love Fellowship Church from one place to another place. He said, now I want you to compare. He said, now the church 
spent in investments over $500,000 over 13 years. He says this morning, he said, look at the bank statement for the new house of God. I looked at the bank statement. And the bank statement said $666,000. Somebody missing this. We've already spent, not going to spend, we've already as a ministry spent $500,000. But we borrowed $666,000. The Lord said, have not I proven myself faithful? It was on, it's only $166,000 difference between what we borrowed and what we spent out in cash, not in credit card, in cash, 500000 over 500000 The Lord said, now, <laughs> this is a part of the preparation. <laughs> he said, now, if I, can, if I can allow Love Fellowship to invest over 500000 in lease payments, he said, can I not pay a debt of 600000 He said, and I'm not going to wait 13 years to pay off the debt. He said, I allow you 13 years to invest in the lease. He said, but it ain't going to take 13 years to do what you've already done. See, we've already done it once. And I'm decreeing and declaring today that God can do it again. Say, what's another hundred thousand? Take a picture. Everybody say, take a picture. But after you take the picture, then you got to calculate. In other words, you got to allow God to show you the cost of the anointing. David said, Lord, I won't do anything for you unless it costs me something. Samuel told Saul, obedience is better than sacrifice. Take a picture of this. Because after you take the picture, then you got to calculate. See, we laid the foundation. I gave you those points God said give him the foundational points first that's why I gave you those eight points or so he said now build upon the foundation see I couldn't speak prophetically until the foundation was laid so we gave you basic foundational for the first 10 minutes now we're speaking prophetically into your life it's not enough to take the picture if you're not willing to count the cost Taking the picture is only one part of it. But once you take the picture, then you got to ask God, God, help me. Show me the details of what I need to do. See, when you count the cost, if you're on your job and they say, well, count up, count up these, these, these pink slips or count up these expense reports or count up these numbers. Amen. That means there's detail in that. It's not enough to take the picture. If you're not willing to count the costs. Joshua. I'm going to prove it. And then we're going to get out of here. Amen. Are you receiving this? Turn with me quickly to Joshua chapter number 18. Joshua, Joshua, Joshua. In the Amplified Classic Version. Um, it, and I'm going to read in the message, but message as well. In verse number one, come on, we got to take, everybody said, we got to take the picture. But we must also count the costs. Notice, notice, notice. 
from the time of Joshua chapter 1 to Joshua chapter number 18, they were steadily taking possession of the land. The first part was crossing over the river Jordan. The second part was the walls of Jericho coming down. And then after the walls came down, amen, they were able to go in. And it wasn't, it wasn't easy peasy. They had to literally do some work fighting the, in, the, the wars and the battles that God instructed them to fight. But as long as they were obedient, God gave them the victory. And, and so they were at this place now. Where well, they had been fighting in wars, they had been obedient, and they even had to deal with those that were disobedient. Like Achan and his family. But then in Joshua 18, everybody was supposed to have had already taken the picture. And everybody was supposed to have already counted the costs by this time. But notice, 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 notice in Joshua 18 and 1. Notice what it says, and the whole, and the whole congregation, everybody say the whole congregation. That's all of us, amen. And the whole congregation of Israel, Israelites assembled at Shiloh and set up the tent of the meeting there. And the land was subdued before them. And there remained among the Israelites seven tribes. Everybody say seven tribes. Now, how many tribes were they? Come on, going back to Sunday school days, amen. There were 12 tribes. But he was focused on seven. Now, one of those tribes was Levite. And Levite, amen, was not assigned to go out and take possession of the land. They, the tribe of Levite was assigned to the priestly order to minister to God in the temple. Just giving you that historical backdrop. So verse number two of Joshua 18. And there remained among the Israelites seven tribes who had not yet divided their inheritance. In other words, back in Joshua chapter one, they all took a picture. But these six tribes, because Levite was one of them, they had not counted the cost. Verse number three, Joshua asked the Israelites, how long? Everybody say, how long? long. Amplified classic version, Joshua 18 and three. How long will you what? Be slack. Wow. The Lord says after a word like this, it's not enough to take the picture. You must take the cost, count the cost. And if you refuse to count the cost, it's accounted unto you as slackness when it comes to the things of God. Joshua asked the Israelites, these these six tribes, how long will you be slack? Everybody say, I got to jerk the slack out of myself. How long will you be slack to go in And possess the land which the Lord your God of your fathers has given you. In other words, it was laid out for them. But they didn't do what was necessary to step up in that thing. I want to submit to you that your repositioning is already laid out for you. Your greater is already laid out for you. That next job opportunity is already laid out for you. The deliverance of your children is already laid out for you. The breakthrough in your marriage is already laid out for you. The breakthrough in your mind and your emotions is already laid out. But you got to do some things. You got to take the picture. In other words, get that mental and spiritual image of what God wants to do beyond your natural sight. And you got to count the cost. He asked the Israelites, those seven 
or really don't sit. How long will you be slack to go in and possess the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, has given you? Here's the details. Because God loved them. He wanted them to get this. Verse 4, provide three men from each tribe. And I will send them to go through the land and write a what? Description of it. You'll never get out of what you're in unless you're willing to count the costs. And a part of counting the costs is to write down the details of the instructions that God gives. And you'll never get detailed instructions until you enter into the presence of God and say, God, I surrender my all to you. Why is it that five tribes took the picture and counted the cost and they took possession of what God promised them way back when he spoke it to Abraham? But then there were another six tribes that were still sitting on the sidelines. This is a personal thing. Everybody say it's personal. It's personal to every family. It's personal to every single. It's personal to every married couple. You decide whether you're going to count these costs. You decide if you're going to take a picture and do something with the picture. That's your choice. God is saying, I'm laying it out before you now. He said, provide three men from each tribe. I will send them to go through the land and write a description of it according to their tribal inheritance. Then they shall return to me. Now read this. I want to read it in the Message Bible. Joshua 1. Joshua 18 and verse 1 in the Message Bible. It says, then the entire congregation of the people of Israel got together at Shiloh. And they put up the tent of meeting. The land was under their control. But there were still seven Israelite tribes who had not yet received their inheritance. Joshua addressed the people of Israel. How long are you going to sit around on your hands? How long? How long? He says, and it says in the message Bible, how long, Joshua says, are you going to sit around on your hands? You can, you can only imagine the frustration of Joshua. God had took them through wars and took them through battles in order to take possession of land. And then you got people just still in the same place. Stuck. As, just like they were when they were in the wilderness. I want to decree and declare to each and every one of you listening, amen, that God is not repositioning us from this place to the new house of God for any of you to be stuck. For any of you to sit on your hands like you did before the crossover. I know we want to shout and dance, but the Lord said, no, 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 no. Take the picture and count the cost. How long? Everybody say how long. How long are you going to sit around on your hands? How long are you going to be putting off taking possession of the land that God, the God of your ancestors, has given you? It's already given to you. Favor is already given to you. The favor to move mountains is already given to you. The faith to see miracle signs and wonders performed is already given to you. He said, how long? He says, pick three men from each tribe so I can commission them. And they will survey and map the land. If you know anything about surveying, 
That's detailed work. They literally got to go out and count each inch, each yard, each acre. And it's got to be accurate. And it's got to be recorded. It's official documentation of land. And that's the seriousness of the crossover. This is not just, oh, let's shout because we're moving into a new building. We're moving into the house of God. This is a prophetic move. This is a crossover. But it's not just about the move in the new house of God. It's about the move of God in you. That's why God had the Joshua take the picture of the congregation and where we are now. And then God told me to tell you to go home and take the picture of your situation. You will be just like those six, seven tribes wondering why things are moving, but you still stuck. Why things are happening and you're not getting any answers. The answers are already there. You got to do what it takes to receive what's already there. Are you all getting this? This is the warning that God said, hey amen, you got to give him a warning. This is the warning God wanted me to give you. He said, they will survey and map the land, showing the inheritance, do each tribe. Then he says, report back to me. They will divide it into seven parts. Judah will, Judah will stay in its territory to the south, and the people of Joseph will keep their place to the north. You are responsible for preparing a survey map showing seven portions. Then bring it to me so that I can cast lots for you here in the, for you here in the what? Presence of our God. This is what the Lord is saying prophetically in this text to us. He's saying over the next, we're in January, the next 10, 11 months. He says they're going to be families. They're going to be singles. They're going to be couples. They're going to be people in the congregation that are going to take the picture they're going to count the cost, and they're going to be just like these tribes. They're going to do what it takes to inherit what's already been prepared for them. And then they're going to come and report back their testimony. You didn't hear what I said. God told Joshua to tell the people, now once you go and survey the land, once you get off your hands, once you jerk the slack out of yourself, once you do the detailed work that is necessary to take possession of what God has already prepared, he said, come back and report to me. But it wasn't that they were just reporting to Joshua. They were reporting to all the congregation of Israel. Look what the Lord has done. The Lord has favored us too. Even though we were slack in one season. When the slack was jerked out of us. When we got up off of our hands. We saw God move in a whole new season. I decree and declare God is about to move in a whole new season in your life. You got to get out of the old season. Reposition yourself for greater in the new season that God is moving you into. As God is doing it. Say God is going to do it. As God is doing it. I'm issuing the challenge right now. He's going to put it in your heart to come and you're going to share your testimony. Throughout this year, there will be testimony after testimony of what God, not only what God did, but what God is doing. Now watch this. If there's no testimonies, that meant that there were a lot of people that sat on their hands. 
Ah, somebody will get that next week. If there are no testimonies, that means that there were a lot of people that remain slack. The Lord says there's no reason why you should not have a great testimony. I don't care where you are right now. That's your baseline. Take a picture of your baseline. Then count the costs. And then allow God to work that testimony in and through you. Did you receive the word of God today? Can we stand on our feet? The Bible says this. The Bible says that when all the way back in Joshua, in the early parts, that God's moved on Joshua's heart to send three spies out to spy out the land of Jericho. You know the story, but when they spied it out, they met a harlot, a prostitute, they Rahab that basically told them what God already told them. <laughs> she confirmed the word of God that was passed down through Isaac, I mean through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they knew that it was of God. And the spies came back and they reported back to Joshua all that had taken place. God gave Joshua instruction to tell the people that he's about to do a miraculous work, that this fortified wall this fortified wall was about to come down. Now the Lord says this. He says now, on the first Sunday that we move in, which is not going to be our dedication Sunday, but the first Sunday that we move in, the Lord says that we are to follow that same set of instructions. that we will walk on the inside of the house of God seven times. We're going to walk on the inside. Because the Bible says as they walk, they praise, they worship, they shout it, they dance. And on the seventh time, what happened? The walls came down. Now that's on February the 20th, amen when we have our first service in the new house of God. You didn't hear what I said. I said on February the 20th. That's what we'll do then. Somebody need to record that. Amen. Write that down. But he said here and now this represents the wilderness. This represents this the 500 plus thousand dollars that has been invested in lease and rent payments over the last 13 years. The Lord says this next set of instruction is personal. What we do over there is going to be congregational. But if you can stand on your feet as the minister is praying, praying, and if you can kind of spread out a little bit this is what the Lord is saying you may have to go into the hallway to do this I don't it doesn't matter but this is what the Lord is saying he's saying I want because this is personal he said but while we're on this side of the Jordan I want them to take a seven laps for what I'm about to do in their life Media team, if you need to, amen, stop the camera or whatever. Keep it going if you don't want to. Keep it going. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up before you start moving. Hold up. Hold up. Know why you're taking the seven laps. Because some walls are coming down. Know why you're taking the seven laps.
because you're about to see breakthrough like you haven't seen it in before. Know why you're taking the seven left? Because God is about to do the miraculous. God is about to do signs and wonders. Know why you're taking the seven laps? Because you're about to step into what God has already prepared for you. You got to know why you're taking the seven laps. Now that we've given the instruction, come on, find a place. Take your seven laps. Decree and declare what God has said about you. You can go into the hallway. You can go anywhere you want to go in this house of God. Take the lap. Take the lap. Take the lap. Hallelujah. 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 Take your seven laps. Take your seven laps and come back and rejoice in God. Hallelujah. Take your seven laps. Take your seven laps in the name of Jesus. You, you, listen, your laps are different than somebody else's lap. You are moving for what God is doing in your life. Glory to God. Take your seven laps and rejoice in the Lord. Bless his name. Bless his name. If you just got to go in a circle seven times, it doesn't matter. Just take your seven laps. Take your seven laps. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. You are worthy, oh God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. 